Hello, this is Aloisa with Math Leopard. Today, we are looking at the derivation of the Pythagorean musical scale, tuning A to 432 hertz, alternately tuning C to 512 hertz. To begin, let's consider the epogduan of Pythagoras, or on the eighth, which describes the musical octave, also meaning eight, both in relation to the values six through 12, as well as the tetractus. I'll place the number six through 12 above, highlighting the numbers 6, 8, 9, and 12, as those are the ones seen in the image from Pythagoras. If I have two monochords, and the length of their strings are equivalent, say length 6 units, then when voiced, the notes are equivalent, and form a ratio of 6 to 6, or 1 to 1, that is, unison. The unison tone is indicated on the tetractus by the first number, 1, and represents the monad, that which has zero dimension, yet infinite potential. From unison, all other tones emerge. The second interval, annotated in this figure, is the octave. If we have the length of our monochord string, the frequency has doubled, and we've risen one octave higher. This gives us a ratio of 6 to 12, or 1 to 2 when reduced, and is represented by the ratio of the first to the second line of the tetractus, highlighted in yellow and blue respectively. This ratio, called the diapason, is represented geometrically as the line, or dyad, the monad being liberated in one dimension. The third ratio is from 6 to 9, or from 8 to 12, both reducing to a relationship of 2 to 3, called the diapente, or perfect fifth. We can see this 2 to 3 relationship between the second and the third lines of the tetractus, highlighted in aqua and blue, respectively. This third line of the tetractus represents the triad. The potential of the monad can now move freely in two dimensions, thereby creating the plane. The fourth ratio between the Roman numeral integers on the image is either from 6 to 8 or 9 to 12, both resulting in the ratio of 3 to 4 when reduced. This is a perfect fourth, or a diatessaron, represented as the ratio of the penultimate and final lines of the tetractus, highlighted in blue and purple, respectively. The final line of the tetractus represents the tetrad of space. The monad is now liberated into all three dimensions, thereby creating the solid. The final ratio is between the middle two integers of the image, that of 8 to 9. This is irreducible, but re represents a Pythagorean whole step in music. The importance of this ratio can be seen in its relation to the perfect fifth and fourth. If we either rise up a fifth, then descend a fourth, or rise up a fourth, then descend a fifth, the distance from where we began is a ratio of 8 to 9, or a perfect whole step. In effect, we are taking the ratio of a fourth to a fifth, 3 to 4 over 2 to 3, resulting in a 9 to 8 ratio, called the sesquioctavum interval in Latin, or the agdoan, as seen here in Greek. This ratio of ratios evokes the higher dimensional realm of the fifth element, shown in the tetractus as a completion of all ten of its components, returning to the monad, or one, by Pythagorean reduction, on a higher plane. Now let's consider Plato's lambda and its relationship to the Pythagorean musical scale. We begin its construction with the value one at its apex. Along the left interior of the lambda, we increase each subsequent entry by two. Hence, from one we arrive at two, then two times two yields four, and finally 4 times 2 yields 8. Along the right interior of the lambda, however, we're going to increase each subsequent entry down from 1 by 3. Hence 1 times 3 yields 3, times 3 again yields 9, times 3 again gives us 27. On the exterior of the lambda, we begin with the integer 6. It's interesting to note that both Plato and Pythagoras chose to begin their constructions with 6, but why 6? Six? 6 is an incredible number, being equivalent to both the product and the sum of its proper divisors. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 plus 2 plus 3 is also 6, called a product perfect and perfect number respectively. Using 6 as our starting point, the rule on the left-hand side of the lambda is multiplication by 2. Hence, let's annotate the doubling beginning with 6 on the exterior of the lambda. Twice 6 is 12, and twice 12 is 24, and twice 24 is 48. Continuing multiplication by 3 on the right, let's place the triples beginning with 6 on the exterior right of our lambda. 3 times 6 is 18, 
times 3 again is 54, times 3 again is 162. The first calculation I'd like to consider is the arithmetic mean. We recall that to find the average between two numbers, we take half of their sum. Beginning on the left exterior of our lambda, we note that the arithmetic mean between 6 and 12 is 9, so I'll place this value above the 12. Now let's calculate the average value between 12 and 24. 36 over 2 yields 18, hence I'll place 18 above 24. Finally, the arithmetic mean between 24 and 48 is 36. This is then placed above 48 on the left. Moving to the right exterior, let's find the average value between 6 and 18. Half of 24 yields 12. Let's place this above the 18. The average value of 18 and 54 is 36. We place this above the 54. And finally, the arithmetic mean between 54 and 162 is 108. This final value is placed above 162 on the exterior right of our lambda. Another and more appropriate mean is termed the harmonic mean. This mean is found by taking twice the product of the two numbers, then dividing by the sum of those two numbers. For example, on the left exterior of the lambda, if we take the harmonic mean between 6 and 12, we arrive at 8. Let's place 8 beneath the 6. Now let's find the harmonic mean between 12 and 24, or 576 divided by 36 yields 16, and place this value beneath the 12 on the lambda. Finally, the harmonic mean of 24 and 48 is 32. Now on the exterior right-hand side of the lambda, taking the harmonic mean of 6 and 18 yields 9, which we place beneath the 6. The harmonic mean of 18 and 54 is 27, which we place beneath the 18. And finally, the harmonic mean between 54 and 162 is 81. It's interesting to note that on the left, the harmonic mean values, seen in blue, are all subsequent powers of 2, namely 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, and to the 5th, respectively. Whereas on the right, the harmonic mean values are all subsequent powers of 3, namely 3 to the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Now let's consider the arithmetic mean between 1 and 2, that is the ratio for the octave. It's 3 over 2, that is a perfect 5th whereas the harmonic mean between 1 and 2 is 4 over 3, or a perfect fourth. Note, too, that the ratio of 8 to 9 for a Pythagorean whole note is seen in the ratio of the first harmonic means on either side of the lambda. If we consider the first arithmetic mean on the left being 9, we see that it, too, must follow the doubling rule. Hence, twice 9 is 18, the next arithmetic mean, and twice 18 is 36, the final arithmetic mean. On the right, the rule was tripling, Hence, beginning with the first arithmetic mean 12, when tripled yields 36, and tripled again yields 108. The same holds true for the harmonic mean, in that, on the left, twice 8 is 16, and twice 16 is 32, whereas on the right, 3 times 9 is 27, and 3 times 27 is 81. We see, therefore, that this lambda is infinite, and can be extended on either side as far down as we like. As stated above, I would like to construct my scale with a frequency for A of 432 Hz. But why should we consider this frequency at all, when A440 is the accepted tuning convention? You may recall from my videos on the music of the spheres that the frequency of Venus was 442.459-0087 Hz, which evokes love, harmony, and balance. And the frequency of the synodic moon, the time between subsequent new moons, is 420.845493 Hz, a cooling tone that is dispersive, healing, and liberating. The harmonic mean between these two frequencies is exactly 432 Hz. Although the calculations may be ever so slightly off, that error is so small as to be absorbed by the error estimates within the periodicity of the planets themselves. Combining these two reminds us it is in the darkest of nights that we find our true self. To know one's own heart is to be liberated. There is no greater strength than knowledge of self. This is why 432 hertz is where I chose to begin our healing and liberating scale. In music theory, we can rise up through seven octaves, increasing by fifths 12 times, known as a circle of fifths. Beginning at A, 432 hertz, let's construct this circle as follows. I'm going to increase by fifths, then reduce the frequency back into the octave I began with, that is, between 432 hertz and the next octave up at 864 hertz. 
For example, rising up a fifth from 432 hertz is equivalent to multiplication by three halves, which yields a frequency of 648 hertz, approximately an E. Rising up again by a fifth yields 972 hertz, outside of the octave range I would like. So let's bring this down an octave to 486 hertz, or a B. Raising 972 hertz up a fifth yields 1458 hertz, which when brought down an octave is 729 hertz, or an F sharp. Our next tone is C sharp, brought down two octaves to a value of 546.75, followed by G sharp, reduced two octaves to a value of 820.125 hertz. It's interesting to note that 0 0.125 is equivalent to one eighth, a decimal value we will return to in a bit. And finally, rising up another fifth yields E flat with a value of 615.09375 hertz after being lowered three octaves. We could continue this trend arriving at 7381.125 hertz after rising another fifth, but instead I'd like to descend by fifths from A432. To descend a fifth, we multiply by the reciprocal of three halves, namely two thirds. Hence, the next fifth down from A is at 288 hertz, which, when raised an octave, gives us D at 576 hertz, a value within the range we seek. Continuing down another fifth, we arrive at 192 hertz, or a G. We raise this up two octaves to 768 hertz. Continuing down, the next note we encounter is C at 512 hertz when raised two octaves from 128 hertz. Then an F at 682.66 bar hertz when raised three octaves. A B at 455.111 bar hertz when raised three octaves. And finally, 37.925 bar hertz were we to reduce down another fifth. As this is the circle of fifths, it should be the case that 37.925 bar is seven octaves down from the highest E flat, yet unfortunately they differ ever so slightly. This difference is termed the Pythagorean comma, whose value we will discover momentarily. Let's recapitulate the major scale portion of the circle of fists as ratios measured from C. The ratio of one to one, the monad of the tetractus, has but potential and no movement. Hence we call this relationship unison. However, the ratio of two to one, or the dyad of the tetractus, evokes the line and its relationship to the monad, wherein the point can move in but two directions. Hence, we increase our initial value of 512 hertz by two, arriving at 1024 hertz, known as the octave interval. With this stated, our goal is to place all the major scale values on the circle of fifths within these two frequency measures that is, within the same octave. We note that raising up a fifth from C, we arrive at G, as indicated by the dark red arrow. This entails our value of 512 hertz rises to 768 hertz by multiplication of three over two, or by a perfect fifth. Note this ratio interior to Plato's lambda, and recall the relationship between the triad, or plane, and the dyad, or line. Rising from a C to a D, indicated by the light red arrow, we must go through two intervals of perfect fifths. Hence, we multiply our initial frequency by 3 over 2 twice, or 3 halves quantity squared. This gives us a value of 1,152 hertz, above the 1,024 hertz threshold for our octave. To reduce this down an octave, we divide by 2 and arrive at 576 hertz. Hence, the product of 3 halves squared and division by 2 yields a ratio of 9 over 8, the Pythagorean whole step, seen as a ratio of the first exterior harmonic means in Plato's lambda, as well as a step up, if you will, from the monad to the higher dimensional representation thereof. Next, we travel from C to A, as indicated by the orange arrow. Hence, we rise up 3 perfect fifths, or multiply through by 3 halves quantity cubed. This results in a frequency of 1728 hertz, once again well beyond our octave. To bring this down an octave, we divide by 2, which yields 864 hertz. The product of 3 halves cubed and 1 half gives us a ratio of 27 over 16, a Pythagorean major sixth. Once again, note these two numbers on Plato's lambda. Rising from C to E, seen here in yellow, we multiply by 4 perfect fifths, or 3 halves raised to the 4th, resulting in a frequency of 2,592 hertz, 
we must bring this down two octaves, hence we divide by four. The resultant product of three halves to the fourth and one fourth is 81 over 64, known as a Pythagorean major third. We next traverse the circle from C to B, first to the B higher than C. Hence we multiply through by three halves to the fifth power, or five fifths. Then we come down two octaves from a 3,888 hertz by way of division by four. Hence we multiply through by three halves to the fifths. For the five fifths we rise through. Then we come down two octaves from 3,888 hertz by way of division by four to 972 hertz. This process yields a ratio of 3 half to the fifths times 1 fourth, or 243 over 128, known as a Pythagorean major seventh. If instead we'd like to calculate the ratio to descend to the B preceding C on the keyboard, we would reduce our resulting frequency by 3 octaves by way of division by 8. Hence, 3 halves to the fifth divided by 8 yields a ratio of 243 over 256, known as a Pythagorean semitone. The only remaining note in our C major scale is an F, so moving from C down to an F, seen here in purple, we're required to descend a perfect fifth, or multiply our frequency through by two-thirds, resulting in 341.3 bar hertz which we then raise an octave by multiplication through by two. This process of two-thirds followed by multiplication by two yields a ratio of four-thirds, or a perfect fourth. But what about the Pythagorean comma? How is this ratio calculated? As I stated earlier, the circle of fifths is meant to rise through seven octaves by way of increasing 12 perfect fifths. Doing this requires us to multiply our frequency of 512 hertz by 3 halves to the 12th power, yielding 66,430.125 hertz. We now reduce this 6 octaves, because we'd like to be 1 octave higher than 512, hence divide by 64. What results is 1037.970703 hertz, which is not quite 1024 hertz. So how far off are we? Let's take the ratio of 1024 over 1037.970703 and try to eliminate the decimals. At the very least, I can multiply through by 64 top and bottom to raise each value up 6 octaves. This yields a ratio of 65,536 to 66,430.125. However, we know from earlier that 0 0.125 is equivalent to an eighth, or agdoan rather apropos for the topic at hand. Hence, we multiply through by 8 top and bottom. What results is the quotient of integers 524,288 and 531,441. This is the Pythagorean comma. Its decimal equivalent is approximately 0 0.9865403683868, only 1.346% away from inequality. So now let's consider all 13 notes of the Western musical scale, beginning with A432 hertz. If we progress by a Pythagorean whole note, that is by a factor of 9 eighths, we arrive at B486 hertz. However, if we rise a Pythagorean semitone, 256 over 243, from A432, we arrive at B flat with a frequency of 455.111 bar hertz. Continuing graphically down, but musically upwards with whole notes, and both graphically and tonally up with semitones, the next whole note from B, 486, is C sharp at 546.75 Hz. Because progressing up either a semitone from B or a whole note from B flat lands us at C, 512 Hz, or 2 to the 9th power Hz. A whole note from C sharp lands us at E flat with a frequency of 615.09375 Hz, whereas going a semitone from C sharp or a whole tone from C lands us at D 576 Hz. As opposed to continuing graphically down from E flat, let's go up a semitone therefrom or up a whole tone from D, arriving at E 648 Hz. Resuming down the chart by whole steps from E, we arrive at F sharp with a frequency of 729 hertz, or 9 cubed hertz, and up a semitone from E, we arrive at F 682.66 bar. Now both up a semitone from F sharp, and up a whole tone from F, we come to G at 768 hertz. 
Then down a whole tone from F sharp, we land at G sharp with a frequency of 820.125 Hz. Finally, both up a semitone from G sharp or a whole tone from G, we arrive an octave up from where we began at A, 864 Hz. Exactly. So why isn't there a Pythagorean comma here? Or at least one twelfth of one? How is this scale perfect? I'll let the graphics speak for themselves, noting where the break in our progression mimics the circle of fifths. I hope you found this topic as fascinating as I did. The beauty of mathematics within the quadrivium explicitly, and the trivium implicitly, is for me without bound. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.